Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and today I'm going to show you how to create uh, an animated character sprite sheet uh, very simply, very quickly. Uh, I had to create one for a tutorial, and I thought I would show you the process that I use. Uh, right up front, i got to tell you, I'm going to use three pieces of software, uh, one of which is Blender, and the other one is Texture Packer. Uh, Blender is free and open source. Uh, Texture Packer has a free version available that we can get by with here. Uh, the other piece of software here I'm using is Mixamo Muse. I actually recently used it for, uh, I did a review about a month back. Uh, if you're interested in this product, I'm not going to cover it in much detail today because I covered it very thoroughly in that video. I'll link it in the comment sections earlier below. Uh, but basically it's a character creator. Uh, it's what you see in front of you right now actually. And uh, I bought it off Steam. It was on sale for 30 bucks. Uh, regular sells for about $100, and there's a stripped-down version of it that you can start with for free. Uh, but if you get the commercial version, the one I'm using today, it allows you to two free auto rigs a week. And an auto rig, if you're not an animator, a rig is basically creating the skeleton that controls your character, and that is a time-consuming and annoying process. So having a program that does it for you is kind of nice. Uh, so you can't really follow along with this if you don't own Fuse, but it might make you want to go and buy it. You could try it with the basic. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if they give you a free. I think they give you a couple of free, so you should be able to do this um, at least a few times uh, using even just the basic. But it doesn't have quite as many uh, body parts or um, textures and materials and such to work with. Uh, however, using these three tools combined, we can create a character, an animated character sprite sheet in about 10 minutes, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm cheating a bit because I've already created our character. Here he is in Fuse. And uh, basically, it's built, you pick body types, uh, like the, the torso, leg, arm, head, so on, and then you modify them, like cr make his biceps bigger, smaller, or you can drag it with your mouse, do it directly there, shoulders bigger or smaller, uh, then you dress your character, give them hair, uh, hats, gloves, etc., uh, until you have a character you ultimately like. If you've ever created, if you've ever used a video game where you can create your own character, Fuse is basically that. That's literally all you do. Is you, you build people out of parts. Um, you can actually model your own parts and import them from a third-party program. So if you want to create uh, wings or uh, different coats or fedora or etc., uh, you can model another program, export it as OBJ file, and import it into this program. Um, so you can customize this a great deal if you wish to. Uh, out of the box with the the purchase version anyways. There's a fairly good selection of uh, different things and then the custom as you can, like for face you've got uh, quite a bit of different settings and that's there's your head settings. There's a lot of settings and then you get into texturing and this is where it allows you to do I can change the dirtiness, the colors, the textures, the patterns, the I can add dirt, grime, etc, blood onto these surfaces uh, ditto for the skin, ditto for using, it's actually using a product called Substance um, from Algorithmic. Uh, but you combine all these things together, you basically create your characters. You can create a character, this guy I created in about, I don't know, about a minute and a half. The only reason why I'm actually um, not showing you the export is I already recorded this tutorial once and I screwed something up down the road and I can tell you what. Uh, but unfortunately I used up my uh, two feet auto rig, so I'm going to be recreating this guy. Uh, but we've already created it on the server. So what happens, once you've made him, then you just click your animate button. The animate button then causes, if you haven't already signed in, you'll have to create an account with the Mixamo. Uh, but then it sends it up to their server, which we shall now jump over to now. So boom, here's your character over at their server. Uh, you select it, like so, and you animate it. Uh, this is the heart of what Mixamo does for a living, is they provide animations. Um, if you're not an animator, you don't really know what goes into keyframe animations, but making them look good is kind of, it's tricky. And they provide them, at a cost, um, about 15 bucks an animation, or motion packs, but you create your model, and then you pick the animations you want to go with. As you can see, they do provide a fair number of animations completely free. And the key one we're going to want, right now I'm just creating a walk pose, so I'm just going to add the walk pose on, like so, and my character comes in. Uh, you could have set up, there's a motion pack, uh, that's actually where I screwed up, but there's a motion pack that which will cause you to be able to do walking, jumping, turning, all those things kind of right off the hop. But here's your character, nicely animated, looks pretty solid, and when you're done, you simply, so I, if you wanted to, you click add motion and pick a new one, add it on, so on and so forth. Uh, they do literally have 
um, a few probably over a thousand uh, they do have subscription if you are doing a lot of animations it does make sense to get a subscription they run up to like a hundred or two hundred dollars a month but uh, compared to the cost of hiring an animator it can still be quite cheap and they have a huge volume of different like sword swings different style fencing swings jumping jumping hang etc uh, but once you've got it to the way you want it you just simply uh, uh, call it let's say big guy walking and we'll save it and then you just go ahead and download. Now this is the next thing that's key to this video is I am currently using Blender 2.73. Uh, I'm recording this on the 9th of January in 2015 and that was released two days ago. And one of the major things that they added into it was FBX import. And if you've used Blender at all in the past, you know one thing. FBX import sucks. Sucks so bad it's unusable. Well that's changed actually, which is really strange here is normally what you'd use is Collada when importing into Blender. And in this case, actually, FBX is now magically better. And that has never happened to me before. So um, once your guy is done, come on here. You just pick it out for the list. As you see, I've done a number of them in the past. But you pick your guy. And you down here, you pick which format you want it to be in. Uh, as I, spoiler alert, I'm going to use FBX. Um, you can turn on, the, turn on or off the keyframes, uh, optimization if you want. We'll just leave it uh, as it stands, so uh, 30 frames of, of uh, keyframing will be included. Uh, sorry, 30 frames per second of keyframing will be uh, included, so there will be no taking them out. Uh, you can tune it down, though. Uh, and done. So I'll go ahead and... Oh, I got Sorry. Pick him. Set FBX, keyframe off, download. Uh, pay no attention to the earlier failed attempts. Uh, that boiled down to, I'll show you quickly what the issue there was. Um, it's one of those things, if I spend a bit of time, I can totally figure out exactly what I did wrong, but I need to go to this folder now anyways. Um, the uh, the animation, when I applied a local, when I applied the, the package, which was just seven bundled animations, it actually came out where they were all separate files with one main file. So these are linked in. Um, it's set up for Autodesk's way of doing things. I don't know offhand how to deal with this in Blender. Uh, so I did a single animation at a time. By the way, you can go back to Mixamo at any time. Um, and if you want a different animation, if you want to do like one animation per download, you easily can. You just go back to your characters, pick the character you want, and do animate, and it creates a new one. So you can do it to your heart's content. Um, so you don't have to bring them all down as a single file, so that is not an issue. It just caused problems with my particular tutorial. Uh, so now it's downloaded. Right. Da -da 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 -da. Big guy walking right there. So let's go into Blender here. We'll just... Uh, Delaying guy. So we'll import now our FBX file from downloads. The guy walking. Like so. Here you go. And let's make sure it's textured. It is. Like so. And let's play the animation. Looking pretty good. Now you see the animation only goes to uh, frame 32. So we will truncate our animation at 32, press play. There you go. A nice little animated walk cycle. Now all we have left to do is render this guy out. And in order to do that, let me just stop here. And we will go back to slightly less hard on my computer solid mode. And now what we got to do is set our camera up. This guy here. And the way I position the camera easiest way just go in here and set lock camera to view like so and then just select your camera and then as you orbit it it moves so what we want to do is get it so that our animation is entirely within the frame of the camera like so ish we're going to change this in a second because next up we need to set the resolution and we're, we're obviously not going to render it at full resolution this is a, a 1080p and that's a huge sprite sheet. Well, what we want to do is render it down to uh, something a little bit more sprite sheet friendly. This gating here, this frame you see, that's the resolution that the camera will record. So what you see in that is what will be recorded. So we just come on over here, and we're going to have probably about two times the height to our width. And we want to stick with power of two textures if we can help it. Um, as it stands, it used to be a requirement. OpenGL 1 required power of two textures, which by that I mean... Um, 
the width or height are either 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, etc. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll make the height 256 and we will make the width 128. Alright, so we got nicely framed here. Now we want to make sure that all of the uh, the bounds of our animation are caught in the frame. So what we want to do is find our largest frame. Probably that guy. And then we just want to center the camera around it. Best as possible. Alright. Nope. I missed. Alright. I probably want to be a little bit more straight on. All right. That's probably good. Okay, so there's our character. It's framed in the camera, so we're rendering pretty much just the character. Now, what you often would probably want to do in your particular sheet is line up the bottom of the sprite to the very bottom, so it makes positioning easier. Uh, I should probably do that now, actually. So let's... Uh, so now I'm going to have to gate it again. Eh, that was dumb. All right, let me just get to the full step. There. So line it up to about the bottom of the frame, like so. You could reduce the height down. Uh, I'm cool with it being that height, but this will make positioning easier on. Uh, so now you're done. You, your guy is set up, and we hit play. Nicely animated. This is what it's going to render. Now it's just a matter of rendering. Uh, we've got a resolution set right right here. Uh, there's just a couple things we have to do. First off, uh, we want to set it so that we don't get a background. We want transparent here so that our sprite has, well, transparency. Uh, let's just come on in here and go to uh, transparent. And that will cause it to not render a background. Uh, so um, it, the alpha channel will be completely blank. Um, the other thing you might want to play with a bit before continuing is your lighting. I've just taken the default scenes lighting here. May not be, you know, it's not going to actually look like that. Here, let me just render a single frame. I'll show you what I mean. That's good enough for you. We're good to go. Uh, if you want it less alias, you can play around with the settings here. Um, but for the most part, I'm content with that. I'm zooming in a lot to make it pixelate like that. I'm okay with that resolution. I'm okay with that level of lighting. It works for me. So I'm right now I'm ready to render. And I'm back. So in order to render, we're going to do the sequence, which is 32, 1 to 32. Start frame 1 and frame 32. So if you've had multiple animations in here, you would probably do them separately. Uh, you now just pick the name of the sequence. I'll call it walk. Uh, this is set to render PNG files. Uh, you can change this. You could make it an image. You could make it uh, JPEGs or whatever. Uh, just keep in mind if you want to have a, um, you want one that supports transparency, which PNG does. I like PNG. It's got a good, uh, good uh, trade-off of quality versus size, and it supports transparency. So I'll go ahead with that. Uh, you can change the compression amount. We don't really want any compression for the most part. We don't want any artifacts created, but I'll go over the settings. Um, so yeah, we're ready to render. Once you're ready, you just come back up here and you click animation. It will now go through and animate each frame of our sprite sheet like so. And done. All right. So now if we go to the directory, we see them. Each one gets uh, the, it, the name of uh, the number, the, the four digit number at the end was the uh, current frame within Blender. So if you started at frame 76, it would have been walk 76, then 77, 78, etc. Um, so the name that we provided and then the current frame uh, from Blender. So sometimes you'll, if you've just did, uh, it's, it's kind of an argument in favor of doing your animations as separate files, because otherwise you're going to have to rename each file yourself, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, but now we're done. Uh, our thing is animated. We are going to head now and use a program called Texture Packer. Texture Packer is, uh, as you can see, it's it's commercial, um, but there is a completely free version. It's stripped down, uh, but good enough for our needs. So we'll just go ahead and start it up. You can pick which uh, format you want to generate. Ultimately, we're creating one image with all these images smushed together. That's generally how a sprite sheet works. Uh, what the other thing is going to do is determine uh, the index file that's generated for us. I'll go you know, ahead and create libgdx, because that's something I use quite often. 
like so. And here is the majority of texture packer. If you look through gamefromscratch.com, you'll actually find I've done a couple of tutorials covering this guy already. So again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but I'm going to show you the settings that you want to set to get your animation out of here. And we're just going to go and we select all of our images, like so. Drag them into our program, like so. And I don't actually want it to optimize. Like what this has done is it's fit the animation frames in as smoothly as it could. And I don't want that. I actually want it to uh, just fix them in as normal recs, like so. The next thing is I want it to do power of two. We already talked on that. Like so. So I want to keep the width and height the same, um, the, the power of two thing. It's, it's, it's best optimized for hardware. It tends to be the fastest way to go. It's the most universally supported. So if in doubt, just do power of two. Uh, unless you're really tight on space, I would always favor power of two. Uh, next thing is I want actually each frame to be exactly the same size. You don't have to. That's what that index file is for. Um, so your program is using the spreadsheet. It will actually read um, the dimensions where each frame are and pull it out accordingly. So it's trimming it down for you, but in this case I don't want to. I want each frame to be the exact same size it was going in. And in that case you just turn trim mode off to none, like so. Finally, since we are using um, the free version, you have to make sure you turn this guy down to zero, or you're going to get some artifacts in your rendered uh, results. You do not want to optimize your ping, but that's it. That is your file generated. Once you are done, you just go up here and say publish your sprite sheet, and you name it um big guy walking so and that created the uh the index file for libgdx or whatever program you happen to be using and this one will go ahead and create the png file so i go down here and i will show you here is big guy walking text it's just an index it just tells you where each file is how big it is how to get it so and that is used by you, your program uh, your code uh, and then finally, it will have created big guy walking dot png somewhere. Am I blind? B, B, B. Oh, it's right there. Transparent packer. And there you go. Uh, sprite sheet generated in about I don't know what are we sitting at. 16 minutes, sorry, so I lied a bit, but you can generate sprite sheets really rapidly using this method. Unfortunately, I did use a commercial product in there called Fuse and Mixamo. Mixamo, when you start getting into more advanced animations, it is going to be more expensive, but as far as creating um, game-ready character sprite sheets, you're not going to beat this for speed. Uh, that was done with absolutely zero artistic skill, other than a little bit of knowledge of how to navigate around in Blender and do rendering in less than 20 minutes and this is kind of thing like if you're going to work on all this yourself it will take you hours or days so suddenly that hundred dollars which again i got it on sale for 30 um and then if you have a custom animation at 15 bucks that's money well spent um so i will actually make this sprite sheet available so if you want to play around with it you can uh at the same time we could have um we could have also mirrored uh we come back into blender if you're using um if your game was isometric uh, you could just as easily set your camera up, do it isometric. Uh, you can do your eight-way rendering from each direction, like so, and get all your different sprites. Um, you're probably going to want to work a bit on your lighting. You can make a uniform lighting rig that you'll always import in and work with, so all of your sprites are lit the same. I'm doing this kind of quick and easy using the default settings. Uh, a lot of times what you would have done is added in sun, kind of gotten a more universal lighting on your character, but... You can easily come back here, so I could just come here, just set this now so that I'm at a slightly different angle, uh, and then boom, there's my three-quarter view. So if you're working with uh, isometric graphics, this setup makes it so you can get all those different angles very, very, very quickly, very fast. Uh, and with a little bit of Blender code, you can actually set up the, can the camera um, so that it will do the, the eight-direction rendering around an object for you, so you get a consistent render, and you don't have to manually tweak your camera around. So this setup, if you need animated characters, sprites generated, is very hard to beat. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye.